All right. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome once again to a relocation rundown. Uh, we're the Aaron and home state, but not my hometown, uh, but my home state of Florida, and probably one of my favorite areas of Florida, Orlando. There he is. Hey, Jorge. Hey, guys. How are you? Good. Doing all right. How are you? Good. 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 It's been a while. I know. It's been a bit. Here, you know what? I want to move this back just a little bit more so you can see both of us a little bit better. Why? Don't you want to, like, see my pores? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, it's so good to have you with us. Thanks so much for taking some time to chat. Yes, uh, of course. Um, so tell us a little bit about, you know, yourself, your background, who are you? Uh, g you know, give us a quick intro and then we'll jump in. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm Jorge Perez. Uh, I'm uh, born and raised in Orlando, Florida. I've uh, been here all my life. Um, and so I've been in real estate for about five years now and uh with Com been with compass for about three years and you know just uh I, I joined the year that i met you guys at the austin retreat yeah, yeah. that was great Man, yeah it feels a long time ago at this point and hopefully we'll see you in charleston we're thinking about driving down i uh, maybe you'll drive up and you know it works yeah maybe yeah yeah it's, nice it's not central. that far of a drive it's about eight out eight, to eight, eight ten hours drive from yeah. orlando yeah so one of the first things i wanted to talk to you about orlando and this is one of the things that i think if you're not from the area you, you might not realize, realize how big it is. it's huge i mean the orlando metro area is i mean pretty much it's most of central florida in a, in a, in a sense so tell us a little bit about well first of all where in the orlando area you're from where do you specialize and what can you tell us about this like large metro so i'm like close to downtown so orlando is pretty big we've got you know disney a lot of people are familiar with disney and kissimmee um, Davenport area, just because that's close to Disney, but I'm like kind of like in the downtown Orlando area, and then there's all these different suburbs around. Um, so I'm I'm pretty familiar with the general Central Florida area. So I go, you know, all the way out to Kissimmee and Davenport um, to help a lot of people that are looking for short-term rentals that are near Disney, because a lot of people can have a good amount of uh, income coming from short-term rentals that are near Disney, just because a lot of people come to Disney. Right um yeah so so and then all of them are themed a bunch of people theme them different disney like disney houses and it's it's crazy there's actually a neighborhood that's inside uh it's kind of, it's on disney property it's called golden oak and uh, the the association fees you know are very expensive um but the houses in there are like around you know four plus million dollars and there's about only 300 homes in that community damn so you have you know specialized areas like that and interesting places for maybe investors looking for you know investment income for those short-term rentals what's airbnb like in orlando is that an option uh for so investors? airbnb is an option um in orlando a lot of um different counties have different rules like i'm in orange county in orange county like they have particular rules where they don't want airbnbs but if you live on the property you can airbnb out your bedrooms of course but like when you get closer towards disney there's like a vacation kind of zone where they do allow uh rentals in that you know short-term rentals airbnbs in that area so shifting away from investors for a second um you know one of the reasons we did started this kind of show is we wanted to talk about you know people who maybe want to leave new york where we're familiar and how our market functions and relocate themselves their lives their families to a new area so coming from that lens and less from the investor lens, what's it like to try to come from somewhere else and, and come to the Orlando area? Where are you seeing people come from? Actually, our biggest feeder market is New York. Um, so um, I got some data and in, in, in quarter one of 2024, there was about 1700 license plate exchanges in the state of Florida. Wow. So we're seeing a lot of people come to Florida. There's a lot of great deals, especially from for New Yorkers to come to Florida. I mean, we don't have state income tax. Um, so you're saving money there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I think that that's a, an interesting kind of pivot into talking about how the pricing in your market has shifted, right? Because just over the course of the last five years, I think, from you know, 2024, going back to pre-pandemic, pricing has shifted quite significantly, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. So with higher interest rates means, you know, people are paying more money for their houses. And so now that's an incentive that people want to sell their houses um, because they know that they can get more bang for their buck. But obviously there's a lot more negotiation happening as opposed to a couple of years ago when, you know, people were paying over asking. Now they're able to offer under asking and credits towards, you know, um, closing costs and prepaids because of the higher pricing and not as much of a competitive market. So we actually have about four months of uh, inventory. Okay, so we're shifting maybe with uh, away from the strength of the seller's market that we've been in and buyers, you're gonna have a little more opportunity. Is that your kind of prediction moving forward? Yep. That's yep. great to hear. What about the, you know, what, what are your thoughts regarding the rapid appreciation of the assets over the last few years? Do you think that there's a potential for deleveraging in pricing? Uh, you know, should, should people who own in Florida maybe be a little nervous about their pricing now, seeing as it may not be as stable since it's gone up so far? They, they shouldn't be as nervous as, as normal, you know, because it's just, it, it is gonna obviously depreciate, but like you're gonna have to be able to negotiate a little bit of a price, you know? Okay. I want to shift gears away from the like numbers in business and get into some of the more fun stuff. So what's something that you've seen that's changed in Orlando over your lifetime being there? What's like one of the biggest differences in, in the area? So a lot has changed as opposed to it's people are moving out of Orlando. They don't, they're not moving towards like the center. And obviously if you want, like, for example, if you want a new construction home, you're not going to get one in the downtown central area unless you pay a little more, you know, look, they're looking in the millions for like a new construction in a great neighborhood. Um, or you could get an older home. You know, a lot of people are like steering clear of older homes because there's so many problems and, you know, but if you want to get a new construction, you're looking around 30 to 50 minutes from the downtown Orlando area um, to get a new construction. There's a lot of new construction happening. It's just not in the central area. And it's like, I mean, Orlando is just like a sprawling area. So I, I'm sure like even like an hour outside of Orlando is still kind of Still Orlando. Yeah. <laughs> I know. An hour outside of Orlando is still Orlando. I mean, it's just, it's crazy to see the growth here. I mean, I drive in areas and I'm like, oh, wow, there's a new construction community over here, over here. And in places I would not think that used to be orange groves are now full of new construction homes. That's so crazy. Where are you seeing, where, you know, if New York is one of your biggest feeder markets, which makes sense because of... Yeah. New York, um, <laughs> where are you seeing your people moving to? Where are your sellers relocating to? Are they staying in state? Are they moving out of state? They're staying in state normally. They may move outside. They may move to new construction. Um, I have a lot of uh, sellers that move to the villages. So I don't know if you know what the villages is. A lot of people, it's Disneyland for retirement people. <laughs> um, so it's about an hour 15, an hour 30 minutes from Orlando. So I do see a lot of uh, retirees going, you know, they're retired. They don't want to deal with, you know, a lot of things. So they just decide to move to the villages. Um, and that's a very interesting and fun community <laughs> that uh, is in the villages. I like interesting and fun. That's a good descriptor. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and we do, we do have a lot of people also, like, they're leaving their houses to go to condos. I mean, yeah. they, they don't want to deal with, like, the heartache, you know. I mean, I do a lot of um, 55 and plus communities and... Yeah. So, I mean, it's sad to say, but some people move to nursing homes. I mean, they can't afford to live on their own or they, you know, can't be as mobile as they used to. So they end up going to assisted living facilities, um, long-term care. Um, but yeah, I do a lot on the coast as well. So I do see a lot, I do a lot of condos. Uh, I wasn't familiar with condos back, you know, years ago and, and didn't really do much condos, but now I, I do see a lot of condos. And I know you guys are pretty familiar up there in New York working with condos and and uh, all that well, stuff. Well, we actually tend to do a lot more co-ops. Yeah. And that's kind of one of the weird things about New York City. And, you know, that's one thing we talk about most of the time that we have these calls is New York City is its own kind of weird, intricate, unique market where we have co-ops. We have to have attorneys do our contracts. We can't write contracts. I know in Florida, agents write contracts. So what are some of the unique things about Florida real estate that buyers should know about before they come to your state? So um, 
you know, we, we actually work with, um, we don't have attorneys that we work with. So we go to, basically to the title company and we're able to write the contract. So it's, it doesn't take, I know up north, I mean, in New York, it probably takes an average closing is probably like, you know, 60 to 90 days. Yep. And here, I mean, we can close, you know, uh, under 30 days, depending on financing. But right. literally we can, we can have, you know, cash to close in, in 30 days or uh, if it's a cash deal, two weeks, you know. Um, yeah, so it, if, if, if you're planning on moving, you know, to Florida, you can close on a house within 30 days. So maybe if you're t thinking about making a relocation from the New York market, if you, maybe you have a single family in the Bronx or a, a co-op even, you may need to be prepared that the transaction up here is going to take two to three times as long as you're closing down in Florida. Uh, so that's important to know, I think, for planning purposes. Is there anything else that jumps out at you as something that's unique about your market? I mean, you can if it, pretty much anywhere in Florida, you can access the beach within, you know, an hour drive, you know, from from Orlando to the, you know, East Coast um, of Florida. It's it's literally, you know, from from where I live, it's 59 minutes. Mm. So I could be at the beach in 59 minutes. Word. Um, what do you love most about living in Orlando besides being at the beach in 59 uh, minutes? Um, I love the weather and the diversity. I mean, because like, I, I mean, there's a lot of diversity in Miami, of course, but uh, being, you know, you know, second generation Cuban American, um, there's a lot of diversity in Orlando. Like I, I, you know, I don't have to leave Orlando to go to like a Cuban grocery store or like a Hispanic grocery store. Right. Um, so I, I'm, obviously there's a lot of, of different nationalities and ethnicities in, um, in Orlando. So it's not just Miami, it's Orlando's you know, getting there too. Yeah. Are there other parts of Florida that excite you real estate wise uh, besides Orlando? So um, um, I do a lot in Daytona, um, yeah. Daytona Beach, New Smyrna, Ormond Beach. I love that area. A lot of people are moving. You know, they want to be on the beach. They want to be close. I mean, obviously, you know, New York does have some somewhat of a beach, but, you know, it's nothing like down we have here. A lot the of weather. beaches, actually. The we it's nothing like weather, The weather is a lot better down here, though. And the water is a lot warmer down there. I won't, I won't go in the water up here. Um, and I will say that Daytona Beach is one of my favorite beaches. Uh, the, the powder sand is unlike any other beach I've ever been to. Yeah. There, there's no sand like Daytona Beach sand. If you, ha if you haven't been to Siesta Key, that's like the number one beach in, in the U.S. I think. We went to Key West and had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. We love Key West. We have to go back. Yeah. Um, what's the last thing, the, like one of my last questions for you, what's the 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 thing that you wish people understood about the Orlando area or the Orlando market that's misunderstood? The food scene is getting a lot better. So people okay. that, that don't think that like Orlando has a good food scene, it's getting a lot better. I mean, we've had the Michelin um, guide come, you know, not too long ago and they rated and we got to like four, I think we have four Michelin star restaurants right now in, in Orlando. That's awesome. What, what are some of your favorite restaurants? uh sushi i like kabuki um kabuki sushi is pretty good and then soseki has a michelin star it's an it's an omakase uh, it's like a 21 course omakase and it's like my favorite <laughs> like it's expensive but like it's wor well worth it you know you just sit down there and you keep getting all these you know different dishes and you're like oh when's the last what, what what's when's the last one coming and they're like oh it just keeps coming yeah <laughs> um do you have a success story of a, like a really challenging transaction or a client that you'd want to share to highlight, you know, yourself, your business, what you do? I, 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 so I recently got a compass referral um, and it was a probate listing. The family had unexpectedly lost one of their family members and the house was in his name. And what people don't know if, if you don't have your, you know, your trust or your will or your just your elder law stuff set up basically, you know, has to go through the courts. And if there's, you know, there's people, if the family's fighting for money and for this and that, then it's gonna take a while. Um, and so that obviously delays the transaction and people getting money. So the this transaction was a compass referral that they had reached out to me. And uh, it was for a house in um, Volusia County, which is close to Daytona, probably 30 minutes away from Daytona, called The Land. And um, it was multiple errors. And so it's, it wasn't easy dealing with, you know, multiple people, but we got together and I was able to have one point of contact that I was, you know, able to, to communicate with. And so it was difficult because 
they had just started the court process. Mm -hmm. And so they, you know, once they got all the uh, things was like, hey, and we had a couple offers. And one in particular was a, um, a VA loan, um, which was a person who was in the, in the military. And I guess they had a significant date that they wanted to close on. Well, I said, I, I came to the table and I said, listen, I don't know if we can close on this date. You know, things take a while when they go through probate. We don't know you know, what day it can close. We can say, hey, let's close this day, but if we have to extend closing, we'll have to extend right. it. And so, um, you know, it was just a waiting game. And finally, you know, like a couple of days before, we were able to get the homestead exemption to be able to close. And so um, we literally closed, like literally, before, like it was like 4.30, the closing happened, like, you know, before the title company closed at five. And he was able to close on that date, but it was between back and forth between families and, and buyers, agents and, you know, lending companies. And but at the end of the day, I was able to help these this family with their heirs um, inherit the money and, 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 you know, not have to worry, take the pressure off of them. You know, basically just give me the keys and I'll take care of the rest. That's awesome. Yeah, I love that. I love being able to help families through that process because it's it. There's just it's so, so much telling. more. Yeah, I just feel like there's so much more emotion, and it can get so heated so fast. So to like take take that stress out of the situation is invaluable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I recently just purchased my own personal property, like in the last Congrats. month. So uh, dealing, thank you, thank you. With dealing with that, I'm able to like navigate and understand, you know, buyers, you know, stress that I had, you know, it was, it was stressful because it wasn't any, it wasn't a newer home because it wasn't a community that, you know, is established and I wanted, I, I grew up in this neighborhood. Okay. So it's like, I want to live in the same neighborhood. Uh -huh. And, uh, and just like, it was like uh, two months of just like sleepless nights. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is going to happen. But what was going to happen? So now I can like see the bigger picture when I'm helping a buyer and, and, and purchase a home. Did anything jump out at you through the process? Uh, of purchasing your own home that made you say, oh, I have to change my practice in this way because I never, I didn't understand it until I was in it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't know buying was such a stressful transaction. <laughs> like, you know, I, I, I thought it was, I thought like buying was just kind of easy because I've been on the other side of the table. But now I'm like, okay, now I know that there's a lot of stress involved. And I'm like, okay, now I need to handhold a little more than I normally do just because of everything that goes on. And I, I know the, land, the lender, some lenders do a lot of handholding. And so it's the realtor like have to do a little more handholding than the lender. Cause they're, you know, we're involved in all pieces of the transaction, not just, you know, the purchase, the lending, the relationship after right. the closing. Um, but I do, <clears throat> I do feel like um, with the, the prices being so high and the interest rates being so high, a lot of first time home buyers are probably be going to be going into condos or townhouses instead of single family homes. That's something that that we're looking at. And and the American dream is changing. You know, the American dream of having a home is changing for a little bit. You know, some people may not be able to afford to buy right away. They may have to rent instead of, you know, purchasing and and instead of purchasing a home or maybe, you know, purchase a condo, but with the rise of uh, insurances and, you know, and it, HOAs, community associations, they're going up. I mean, I see a lot of that, you know, recently where the community associations are going up, you know, significant. So it doesn't help the people that live there. Yeah, yeah we had a uh, co-op listing uh, recently and the, the maintenance, which is like the HOA fee, um, went up 25% in one year. <laughs> And the, the residents are like rioting and like, <laughs> I, have a, so I have a house, it I have sucks. a condo listed right now. And the association fee used to be like $300 a month, like last year. And yeah. now it's at 600. Yeah. And brutal. yeah, it's, it's brutal. And, and what, what's interesting is back in the day, that community used to be like a 55 plus community. Yeah. So the people that live there, some of them are still older and it's like, okay, well, what do they do when they're on a fixed budget? income where they can't afford so they they're something that some of them are having to sell yeah. and like move you know either to an assisted living or move somewhere else yeah we have a lot of i here too um the population in riverdale we have a lot of older folks um who have like been in their homes for for 50 plus years and they're experiencing the same thing um and it, it just yeah it's so it's hard. unfortunate yeah and uh 
Yeah. yeah. It's a tough market out there. It's a tough market, no matter where. And uh, I, I feel like it's been tough in other countries. Um, and we're just starting to like feel this like tightness in the past like 10 years. Um, so it, it'll be... It'll be an interesting ride for us all. It'll, it'll be interesting to see how it progresses. Thank you again so much for taking the time to, to chat with us and tell us about your market and your business. Um, I'll give you another chance to kind of who you are, what you do, and sign off. Yeah, yeah. This is, this is uh, again, Jorge Perez in your Central Florida market. Um, you know, I, I specialize from first-time home buyers to, to 55 plus. You know, you know, if you have a, also, also a probate, I do a lot of probate. Um, which a lot of people don't know about or a lot of people don't think about. And, and it's, it's good to have your ducks in a row before you get sick. Thanks so much. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> All right. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye, everyone. Have a good weekend. Bye.